Welcome everyone, I am Osama and I am a PhD scholar at TU Dresden under the supervision of Professor Kates of Fetzer. And I am happy to present today our work on former foundations for Intel SCX data center attestation primitives. Firstly, I would like to thank my colleagues Russia, Do and France for their contributions and feedback on this work. There are three main pillars of data security. The first one is data at rest. Uh, for example, data residing in a hard disk. The second one is the data in transit, for example, uh, in untrusted public networks. There are well-established techniques for both of these types. For example, uh, disk encryption techniques for the first one and um, a TLS for the second one. The new frontier in data security is the data in use. Um, for example, the data when there is uh, when a computation is being done on that. So this is particularly challenging because applications almost entirely operate on the data in the clear. Former methods are well-defined mathematical techniques which prove that uh, the ma ma mathematical model of the system satisfies the well-described uh, precise requirements. Uh, for example, uh, it has been used widely for the verification of the security protocols uh, such as Needham Schroeder protocol and it was discovered after 17 years of its uh, proposal that there was a bug in this using former methods. There are various ways for the protection of the data in use. For example, hardware-based trusted execution environments are the most prominent ones uh, where uh, Hard, where hardware-based techniques are used to isolate the data from uh, untrusted parties such as operating system and other low-level software. Specifically, uh, when we are running an application in an untrusted um, uh, platform such as a cloud, uh, such as a public cloud, uh, then it is of great importance. There are various uh, trusted execution environments which have been proposed uh, such as Intel SGX, uh, AMD Secure Processor and ARM Tuson. Intel SGX is one of the most widely used trusted execution environment and that's why we focus our work on Intel SGX. Most of the prominent trusted execution environments provide an attestation mechanism which is basically a mechanism to give trust to the challenger that the right application is running inside the right platform. And more specifically, this is to verify two main things. The first one is the identity of an enclave, for example, its hash. And the second one is the validity of the platform, that the platform is real and not an emulated one potentially controlled by an adversary. A testation mechanism is an important mechanism because once attested, a remote party can then provision the secrets. There are two main types of attestation in Intel SGX. The first one is called local attestation, which is when an enclave proves its identity to another enclave on the same platform. And the second one is called remote attestation, which is when an enclave proves its identity to a remote party. There are two main types of remote attestation in Intel SCX. The first one is called enhanced privacy ID or APID in short, which is based on Intel attestation services. Intel recently introduced uh, data center attestation primitives, which, are, uh, which allow an, a data center to create its own attestation infrastructure. There are a few related words for the formalization of attestation in Intel SCX. Specifically, a group of researchers at UC Berkeley and MIT provided uh, formalizations for attestation in uh, for a trusted abstract platform. Uh, however, they do not uh, provide the proofs for Intel uh, attestation in Intel SCX, rather use some axioms for that. And Intel also provides some works for uh, uh, the Intel SGX in general, specifically for uh, sequential correctness. They use a tool called uh, deductive verification framework. And for proving the concurrency, they use the concept of linearizability and use the two tools called IPAV and Accordion. They are described uh, in the next slide. Here we compare the Intel's tools uh, with our proposed one. For example, DVF does not uh, model concurrency. IPAF and Accordion, on the other hand, do not support non-determinism. Intel is secretive about its uh, validation processes as none of the uh, proofs uh, and uh, even the tools are not available to the public. 
and uh, finally the compromise that our approach makes is on the level of implementation details here is our workflow the first thing is the data center configuration which represents the behavior of all the entities involved in the attestation mechanism then there is uh, uh, there are operation policies which represent um, the cryptographic protocol in the attestation mechanism and based on uh, these we basically uh, generate a symbolic model of the attestation in Proverif's uh, programming language which is a dialect of uh, applied pi calculus. Then the security goals such as confidentiality and integrity are specified as security properties. And then the symbolic model is trans automatically translated to first order logic clauses in horn form and the security properties are automatically translated to derivability queries on these clauses. And then there is a process of uh, a resolution um, uh, on these clauses. If uh, uh, the fact is derivable uh, from these cl uh, clauses, then uh, Proverif attempts to reconstruct an attack at the pi calculus level. And the dotted box shows uh, uh, the back, uh, back end of uh, Proverif. Uh, uh, if the attack reconstruction succeeds, then we have successfully found an attack on the, uh, with, uh, on the uh, given model with uh, respect to the given property of confidentiality or integrity, for example. And if the attack re reconstruction does not succeed, then we don't know. Uh, uh, this can be due to the abstractions in Proverif. Uh, finally, we have a case in which the derivation could not succeed. In this case, the property or the main security goal is uh, satisfied. Here is a high level overview of the symbolic model for DCAP. The first entity is an application enclave, which is an inter-provided uh, isolation environment for performing some security critical operations uh, inside the encrypted area of the memory. Then there is the application itself. And then the coding enclave basically uh, verifies the reports from the application enclave and uh, it signs them and uh, forms a structure called code for verification. And uh, provisioning certification enclave is another inter-provided architecture which serves as a local uh, certificate authority for uh, coding enclave. And these four entities uh, form a user platform. A relying party is the one which is uh, which attempts to uh, verify the, applica uh, the uh, application enclave and the platform. And uh, and the uh, uh, an attestation infrastructure can also make use of the caching service where they cache the certificates and the revocation list required for performing the code generation and uh, a verification. And then the operational policies define the interaction between all these entities. One of the biggest challenges in specification of Intel SCX DCAP is the presence of various discrepancies in the existing literature. For example, uh, the most cited document of uh, Intel SCX uh, by Kostan and Devadas claim about padding for report key derivation that in case of e-report instruction, it is hard coded and in case of e-get key instruction, it is from uh, SCX enclave control structure. However, it is the reverse and uh, as evidenced by Intel's um, software developer manual. And it is important to point out here that uh, 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 this document does not directly talk about DCAP. However, the structure of the report is the same in APID and DCAP, hence it is still applicable. And the worst, um, Intel's documentation itself contains uh, some ambiguities. Uh, for example, there are ambiguous statements such as the one shown here, the coating enclave report is a report when the coating enclave report is certified. In the context of attestation process, confidentiality is one of the most important security goals for a trusted execution environment. For example, when a relying party sends an encrypted secret to a platform, uh, this can be formalized as a reachability property. That is, we analyze whether it is possible for an adversary to uh, reach a state where it can get hold of the secret in plain text. Another important property is integrity. Uh, which can be seen as uh, that for every message uh, uh, that is accepted, there is previously a state of uh, a message unchanged. But this can be problematic because uh, it can accept multiple messages corresponding to uh, a single message unchanged. Uh, 
uh, this is formalized as correspondence assertions here I again replicate the problem and uh, the solution can be uh, like this that for each message that is accepted there is a correspondence previous event of message unchanged and this ensures that for each message that is accepted in the future there is a distinct earlier event for that. Uh, this can be formalized in the form of injective correspondence assertions. Additionally, we need to check here that the message accepted event is actually reachable because what we verify is that if uh, this message is accepted, then there is a distinct uh, earlier event of message unchanged. So uh, if this message is, uh, if a message is never accepted, it will still return a result of true. So therefore, it is uh, important to verify that the message accepted event is actually reachable. Finally, I summarize the work. We presented the specification of attestation mechanism in Intel SGX data center attestation primitives. This specification helped in the discovery of various discrepancies existing in the literature of Intel SGX. Uh, we specified two important uh, security goals, uh, that is confidentiality and integrity. And for future work, uh, there are various interesting directions. Uh, for example, Intel SEX has been shown to be vulnerable to various side channels. And it is important to formally analyze the effectiveness of the mitigation mechanism in the presence of these side channels. And uh, finally, these, um, uh, uh, this mechanism can also be applied uh, to other trusted execution environments, for example, ARM trust zone, and then it can be used to formally reason about uh, the uh, effectiveness of uh, various trusted execution environments. Uh, these are some of the key references. And I would like to thank you all for your attention. You can follow the project updates in the link here. And if you have any questions, I've, uh, I'm happy to answer them. Hi, uh, joining me is now Isama. Uh, th thank you and welcome for to the own research on it. Um, as uh, waiting for a question to come in, I, I, I'll have the opportunity to ask a few of my own. Uh, you mentioned the, the confidentiality and uh, integrity as security objectives for your analysis. Did you consider other kind of security objectives? And I'm thinking, for instance, of about privacy. Yeah, not yet, but they are uh, one of the future works that we are planning. Uh, so privacy is more important in case of EPID, uh, where we have uh, uh, enhanced privacy identification. For DCAP, uh, it increases the privacy in terms of that you do not have to contact Intel each time for that attestation. So it increases the privacy in that cons uh, that uh, respect. Uh, other than that, uh, so, so basically to answer that, that is uh, one of the future works that we have planned, but that is not yet uh, in our work. Secondly, uh, what we have a plan is to analyze the side channel attacks. That is another property that how much uh, leakage is done by a trusted execution environment or by a specific uh, a trusted execution environment that is in place. For example, Intel SEX, AMD or ARM trust zone. So that is uh, that the, these are the kind of properties that we have in plan uh, to do in the future work. Thank you. Um, so you mentioned side channel attacks, and uh, certainly uh, they've they've basically impacted the Intel's roadmap, or and uh, also it seems a little bit less interest in the literature and uh, recently uh, until Intel addresses some of those problems. Uh, did you, did you, would you have any kind of, of suggestion to Intel to how to, to improve the attestation uh, uh, protocols uh, given your experience with it? Yeah, so basically uh, what I foresee is that uh, one of the ways to do it is to uh, make it more publicly available. And as we see that they have uh, made a couple of papers where they say that they are um, they have done some formal works as I presented like IPAF and uh, DVF tools but uh, none of the tools are available to the public to try it on and gain more confidence so what I would recommend is that having some kind of confidence to the users uh, is good and uh, maybe making it more public not the internals but at least the uh, 
uh, at least some abstract kind of details that how it was done and some overall overview of that that would really help for the um, uh, future generations and maybe people can uh, put in more uh, efforts to in order to make it uh, more uh, uh, resistant to side channel attacks okay uh, i have a question for manur van der Maas. Uh, the scx explain paper also complained about the clarity of the xcs documentation do you think the clarity and transparency of in the ntl sgx documentation has improved since uh can you repeat uh, the first part please uh SGX explained paper also complained about the clarity in SGX documentation. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, do you think it has uh, improved since? Okay, so basically, when the paper SGX uh, uh, explained was written, it was uh, de decap specifically the data center testation primitives uh, was not in place. So um, yeah, so I don't have a feeling that uh, it has improved since then. Because my experience with Appet has and uh, DCAP uh, literature has been similar, that there are some discrepancies and uh, a couple of them I mentioned here as well. And uh, uh, like some fields are, uh, other than that, some fields are missing in some of the literatures that they have mentioned and that replicates also in the DCAP literature as well. So my personal feeling is that uh, the literature has not uh, improved uh, since then specifically comparing APID and uh, a DCAP. I will talk specifically about uh, uh, attestation because that is what I have uh, uh, dealt with in detail. Right. I hope that answers the question. No, no other question. Uh, I have a little bit more uh, kind of generic in, in, interest in, in uh, attestation and I, I think I, I I see that SGX it has a attestation uh, model that is quite different from the the one that ha was in TPM that had the advantage of, of being a little bit more uh, architecture in, in, independent. Uh, do you um, with the all the different systems that exist? Do you, do you foresee that there's, there's hope for a, a kind of unified attestation mechanism for the uh, different? Uh, um, trust and addiction environments coming in the future? Uh, that's actually a tough question. So what I foresee is that uh, probably there will be an integration of the attestation mechanisms, uh, for example, for the lower end IoT devices and also for at the cloud and uh, for uh, the Intel SCX or AMD ones. Uh, but I don't see uh, any advantage of uh, moving towards the unified uh, attestation services. Um, yeah, so that's that's my personal opinion. Fair enough. Um, then uh, I see no other questions. Uh, thank you very much, Utama, for being here, and uh, hope to see you in the, in the future. Yeah, thank you very much.